Greetings, everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is Insight to the End Times. And if you've not been with us before, we are studying from Scripture and from world events. Where might, be, where might we be on God's end time timetable? We're getting very close to the end. And uh, I really encourage you to go to our insights to the end times.com website. You'll find an index of our previous episodes. And you'll f see that we have been sharing, now we're in our third year of sharing these podcasts to identify what the scriptures say about the end times and what do world events say about the end times. And we're going to see, and we have been seeing, that they are like this. They are joined together. We're seeing scriptures that we're talking about the future we're seeing them fulfilled almost on a daily basis. And, um, you know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, which is the chapter that he spoke about the end times, about the end of the world. And he says there, you're going to see nation rise against nation and kingdom rise against kingdom. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. You're going to see famines and pestilence and earthquakes. And you're going to see all kinds of deception. You're going to see false teachers and false prophets and false believers. And you're going to see even the very elect, the very best Christians are likely to be deceived. The Apostle Paul said, as he wrote, the believers in Ephesus, pastored by Timothy, he said in the last days, Believers are going to drop off. They're going to walk away from their faith, giving attention to deceiving spirits, seducing spirits, and de demonic doctrines. We're seeing that in, in churches and ministries all over North America and likely around the world. He also said you're going to see in the last days perilous times. In the last days perilous times. That's referring, that refers to extremely dangerous times. Well, these things are occurring. We're in the last days. We're in the very end. And we're waiting for Jesus to come for the church. It's called the pre-tribulation rapture. That's followed by the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. And the end of the seven years of tribulation conclude with the Battle of Armageddon. That's where the Antichrist and all of his followers as well as all the other followers opposed, who are opposed to Jesus Christ are defeated in an amazing one-hour battle in the Valley of Megiddo called the Battle of Armageddon. Well, as we've been studying, we have been working our way through the second half of the tribulation. We're in Revelation chapter 15 and 16 today. Last Friday, we looked at the seventh angel sounding the seventh trumpet judgment. And that introduces what is called the third woe, and it introduces the seven bowl or vile judgments to take place. Let's read some scriptures today. I hope you have access to a Bible. If not, when you listen to this later and you do have access, please follow along with me. Revelation chapter 15, verse number one says, I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. Verse 5, <clears throat> After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Now this is pretty interesting. Let me just comment on it. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Verse 6, And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. See what's happening here? This is occurring in heaven. And we have the, the um, 
four living creatures, amen, who have given to the seven angels the seven last plagues. And these seven last plagues are golden bowls of the wrath of God, the final wrath of God. Verse 8, the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God, from his power. No one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Chapter 15 is a precursor to the seven, the last seven bold judgments. And John, the, uh, who's writing this revelation uh, from given to him by Jesus Christ, is allowed to see up into heaven where he sees the seven last plagues which will complete the wrath of God. Verse 5 says these seven last plagues, bold judgments, have to are poured out from the temple in the tabernacle of the testimony of heaven. It has to be opened because it contains the seven bowls of the last plagues, the most severe wrath of God. And it has to be opened so they can emerge and flow from the temple. Isn't that interesting? Verse 7 says, Four angels distribute these bold judgments to the seven angels. Each bowl contains progressively stronger plague or stronger judgment that will come upon the earth. And while this is occurring, the temple is filled with the glory of God. It's like a smoke. It fills the glory of God, and no one can enter the temple until the seven plagues have been fulfilled. Wow. This is the third woe. This is the worst level that occurs. We jump from chapter 15 to 16, verse 16, chapter 16, verse number one. I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So now we're about to see the seven last judgments. Bold judgments. Praise the Lord. Uh, New King James version of the Bible refers to these as bowls. The King James version refers to these as vials. They're the very same. It's just a different way of referring to them. So don't be confused by that. The seven bold judgments. I like studying and reading from the New King James. And so that's where we're using the bold judgment reference. Here's the first bowl, verse number two. <clears throat> Are you ready for some heavy-duty stuff? So the first went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. So this first bowl is being poured out, and this first bowl, grievous sores, boils, being poured out on the earth. We're going to study them individually. Let me read a couple more verses. Verse number two says, <clears throat> sorry, verse number three says, the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Wow. Ooh. Third bowl, verse four, then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and on the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O God, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets, and now you have given them blood to drink. It is their past due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, True and righteous are your judgments. Uh, there are seven of them. Those are the first three referred to in the scriptures. We're going to study them individually. But <clears throat> these bold judgments are going to be poured out on the earth during the last few days of the tribulation period. And um, <clears throat> think about this with me for a moment. Go back into the Old Testament. Go back with me to the um, time when God raises up Moses to 
lead the children of Israel, or we call them the Hebrew children, the nation of Israel. <clears throat> they've been in bondage as slaves and servants to the Egyptians for over 400 years. And God raises up Moses to deliver them. And in order to do so, God has to send plagues on the earth. He sends 10 plagues on the earth. They're horrendous plagues. And the first nine do nothing to change the heart of Pharaoh, the leader of the Egyptians. He had such a strong backbone, it seems, and in an in a independent, rebellious type spirit. <laughs> These plagues, oh my gracious, waters turned to blood and lice being released and locusts being released and then on and on it goes. It's not until the 10th plague, the death plague comes that he relents and lets the children of Israel go free. So you'll remember that plague, that 10th plague. That's where the Hebrews were instructed to put blood on of an animal that they were to kill, and they were to put that blood on the doors, side posts, and on the header post. They call it the doorpost and lintel. And when the death angel came to kill the firstborn of man and of beast, when the death angel saw the blood, he passed over. Hence the term Passover. Well, those plagues all occurred in a one-month period. So we have a type in shadow here that these last seven plagues, these last seven bold judgments are likely to occur within a one-month period, <clears throat> the last month of the tribulation period. But at the same time, it appears from the, from the uh, sequence of events that occurs when the Antichrist forces kill the two witnesses on the fourth last day of the tribulation period and leave their bodies lying on the street. Three and a half days later, God raises them from the dead. He resurrects them. We already studied that in Revelation chapter 11. And when he raises them from the dead, he then raptures them into heaven, causing severe pandemonium and panic amongst all the Antichrist followers, the people. They're freaking out big time. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> suggested that these seven bold judgments start occurring following their death and that they conclude with the Battle of Armageddon which is the final bold judgment. Now, what's interesting is this. <clears throat> God's pouring out his wrath big time, like it is heavy duty. And to do so, they had to open the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven because that's where they had been stored and contained. They're horrendous. And they had to open the doors to bring them out. <clears throat> Verse number two again, the very first bold judgment, grievous sores. Uh, these are boils. These are sores. These caused in uh, extreme pain. Hallelujah. Extreme pain, open sores, heavy-duty infection. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is a direct plague from heaven, but from God, the first bold judgment. And it says very clearly in verse number two, these judgments, this judgment particularly, only affects those who had the mark of the beast and those who worship the false prophet or the beast system. Now, I've found over the years that when I talk with Christians, uh, they're afraid of the mark of the beast. And they're afraid of uh, credit cards that have the little chips in them, which they look at and they say, that's like the mark of the beast. So it does have over, over jurors to that. But if you have been with us and studying with us over the course of these uh, insights, you have heard us share with you that the mark of the beast 
is only introduced in the second half of the tribulation period. At mid-tribulation, there's an innumerable company of believers so great they cannot be numbered or counted. It's a massive, massive, massive number. And they're going to be uh, removed from this earth by way of rapture. We call it the mid-tribulation rapture. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. And when uh, one of the uh, elders asks, well, who are these people, this massive group? Who are they? <clears throat> and the answer is, these are those who have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, that reference says this. They are believers. They were believers. They were of the foolish virgin category when the pre-tribulation rapture occurred. They missed it. But they are believers. And they had become believers. Many who had not been a believer became a believer during the first half of the tribulation, owing to the ministry of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. Amen. And so when mid-tribulation comes, Revelation 7 indicates that they are going to be removed from this earth. It's going to be a massive, 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 massive tribulation which would infer that the pre-tribulation rapture likely will be very small. That's, again, something we cannot ascertain completely or exactly. But we do know that this Revelation 7 group are a massive group. And once they are raptured and are out of here, we're into the second half of the tribulation, and we're into the the trumpet judgments, and then we finally hit these bold judgments. It's in the second half that the false prophet is introduced. He is really, um, he is really taking a, the the demonic side of the of the Holy Spirit. Everything Satan has ever done has duplicated what God does. So we have God the Father, we have Satan, the fallen angel, formerly Lucifer. We see God bringing Jesus Christ to the earth in a human form to bring redemption and, and freedom to mankind as we become believers, as we become Christians. So Satan raises up the Antichrist, a man in human form. And then the Holy Spirit, of course, ministers to people and uh, the Antichrist raises up the false prophet. Amen. So the false prophet is the one who will introduce the mark of the beast. And he'll introduce the worship of the, of the mark of the beast or the beast system. And the beast system is really the satanic system. Amen. So this first bowl being poured out is directed right at the 666 mark of the beast, and right at those who have it and those who worship it. And I've heard so many Christian leaders say, well, make sure you don't take the mark of the beast. I want to suggest to you that you shouldn't even be here. You should be either raptured in the pre-tribulation rapture because you were a 24-7 red-hot Christian following Jesus Christ, known in Scripture, Matthew 25, as a wise virgin, or you were receipt, removed from this earth during the mid-tribulation rapture, an innumerable company, amen, a little bit slack, a little bit casual, a little bit uh, uh, come see, come saw, and uh, the Lord got a hold of you, and you were ready to go at mid-tribulation, um, amen? So you shouldn't even be here, but there are still many, many Christians who uh, are are afraid of the mark of the beast because they have not heard our podcasts or really studied their Bible in these end time type scriptures. Well, this is going to be quite an interesting week. When we come back on Wednesday, we're going to take a look at some more of these bold judgments in detail. And as I've said before, you do not want to be here for any of the seven year period. So make sure you're hot, red hot for Jesus Christ right now. We call you blessed.
We'll see you on Wednesday. Amen.